The person who originally coined the proverb, a poor workman always blames his tools, has a lot to answer for. This expression, possibly 14th century, possibly French, absolutely hinders the improvement of beginner artists everywhere, leading to frustration and frequently quitting. But why is it so unhelpful? Well, when you're starting off as an artist, the greatest issue you face is simply the sheer amount of things that you don't know, you don't know. That is, your lack of knowledge and experience means you don't question whether a particular tool is functioning as intended or not. And starting out as an artist is extremely difficult. You need to get over the hump of insecurity that comes with not being good at something while also striving to bring your own very personal vision to life. The thing about creating art is that it forces you to reckon with yourself as a person, even if you don't realise it. And this is huge and extremely worthwhile, but it's also challenging and often draining. And this is where your tools or your materials matter. As a beginner artist, you have no way of telling whether your paints, brushes or surfaces are misbehaving because you lack skill or because the materials themselves are just bad. Story time. In the past, I struggled with this paintbrush. It likes to dump out half of its load of water the second it touches the paper. It makes a big puddly mess. Of course, in my ignorance, I just assumed that it was my fault for somehow loading the brush wrong, rather than the brush just being bad. I didn't blame my tools. What was I? A poor workman? So I struggled with that brush for months before stumbling upon a YouTube video comparing it with other, more expensive brushes, where the reviewer commented on the exact issue I'd been having the entire time. But if I had, instead, just decided to blame my tools and buy a different brush, maybe I wouldn't have been so frustrated. But what do you do when you don't have Scrooge McDuck levels of wealth for art supplies? Many beginners tend to buy materials at the cheaper end of the scale, which makes sense. If you don't know whether you're going to enjoy something, it's not necessarily a good idea to spend a chunk of change on materials that just go to waste. The irony is that cheap materials often lead to subpar results, and then you quit anyway. So, how do you solve this? There are a couple of ways around it. For starters, you can try and find a one-off art class where you're provided with the necessary materials to create a painting. The teacher obviously wants you to get good results, and so they should supply you with materials of sufficient quality to get you there. And obviously this will give you a much clearer idea of whether you like the medium and therefore should invest further. Alternatively, you can prioritise your spending when purchasing your art supplies. The common knowledge for the medium that I use, watercolour, is that your surface is the most important factor for producing good results. This is because of the water absorbing qualities of the paper are absolutely critical for producing the blends and bleeds that make watercolour so iconic. There are many great videos on YouTube about selecting good watercolour paper. I will link a few in the description below if you're interested. Of course, the astute amongst you will note that you'll burn through paper much faster than you do the paint or the brushes, which will make the cost build up regardless. So what can you do about that? Paint smaller. I typically divide my sheets down the middle. Sometimes I quarter them. For watercolour, it also makes it easier to control the water and you get less uneven drying. If you're just practicing, paper has two sides. Use the back. For other media, make sure you do some research into the importance of each component so you can prioritise effectively. Painting comes with an extremely steep learning curve. There are so many terms and techniques that you need to learn if you want to start creating art you actually enjoy. Creating art puts us in a vulnerable position, which makes us more likely to blame ourselves if something isn't working. But if the problem is simply that the materials are bad, no amount of beating up on ourselves will fix the problem. Next time you find a technique just is not working, stop for a moment and consider the possibility that you should, in fact, blame your tools. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like some insights into some good starter materials for watercolour, I suggest you check out the videos on the screen at the moment. And finally, while we're on the topic of expressions that I do not like, let me leave you with this. Like and subscribe.